Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay today. We're going to be going over the 2017 BC free response question for AP Calculus, question six on infinite series. We're beginning with the Maclaurin series. Now, it was a series that was defined as an infinite set of terms and it started like this. We took the first value. Now I'm gonna put it over zero factorial because I want you to notice the pattern then we took the first derivative over 1 factorial and the second derivative over 2 factorial times x squared plus the third and so on and it just goes on like this infinitely it's similar to a Taylor series except this is centered around 0 so that's why we only have the x, x squared, x cubed we don't have to worry about x minus a or anything like that all right, so let's look at these first four non-zero terms. We know what they're supposed to be. Let's make sure we get them. All right, so over here I'm going to write this. We know our first term of f of zero is zero. Then our first derivative at zero is given to us as one. Our second derivative at zero, now we have to use this up here. All right, okay, move this over a little bit. All right, now we know that n is going to equal 1. Because if n equals 1, then I'm going to get the f, f double prime, the second derivative. So that's going to equal negative n, so negative 1 in this case, times the first derivative. Well, I know the first derivative is 1, so this is going to be negative 1 times 1, or negative 1. Now the second, I'm sorry, the third derivative, where n equals 2, it's going to be, again, the same thing. It's going to be negative 2 times the derivative before, so times f double prime of 0. Well, we know that, that was negative 1, so this will be negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2. And we'll have to go out one more, because we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, four non-zero terms. So that's already a 0. So 1, 2, 3, and the next one, so the fourth the derivative, we could put four slash marks, so we can put the number four, whichever you feel like, is um, n equals three, so it'd be negative three times the derivative before. And that derivative before was two, so it's negative three times two is negative six. So those are our values for our derivatives, so let's just keep that clear. Okay. All right, let's use that information and this and put it all together and fill out our Maclaurin series. So f of x is going to be approximately f of a 0 over 0 factorial. And the f of 0 is 0. And one, 0 factorial is 1, so it's, the first term is 0. All right, the second term f prime of 0 was 1. It'd be 1 divided by 1 factorial, which is 1, and 1 times x is just x. The next derivative is negative 1. Negative 1 over 2 factorial, x squared. Our next derivative is 2. So it's 2 over 3 factorial, x cubed. And we need four non-zero terms. There's one, two, three, so one more. So it's going to be negative six over four factorial x to the fourth. Plus our general term we'll get to in a minute. So where we're done with the calculus part, now we've got to make sure this looks like this. All right, our first term is zero. So that's not going to count at all. So. We're going to have x minus 2 factorial is 2, so it'll be x squared over 2 plus, all right, what is 2 over 3 factorial? And remember, 3 factorial is simply 3 times 2 factorial. Well, these will cancel out. 2 factorial is just 2. So we'll have x cubed over 3. All right, and 
than 6 over 4 factorial. And uh, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial and 3 factorial is 6. So you can kind of see the pattern emerging here. And from that pattern, now it's kind of easier to see our general term. Now remember, in the general term, we were going to write this. We're going to say that um, this is our first term, our second term, our third term, our fourth term. So what's our nth term? Okay, well, we know it's an alternating series, so it's going to be negative 1. How do we know if it's n or n plus 1? So if I put n, negative 1 to the first power is negative. If I use 2, the negative 1 to the second power is positive. I need a negative, so it needs to be n plus 1. But then you've got your rest of your pattern here. So it's x to the n over n. And that is your nth term. So your answer is this one. There we go. Now we're going to use this one again for the next question. So I am going to take it with me. All right. So the question for the number two is if we let x equal 1, will this series converge, diverge, converge conditionally, converge absolutely? Now part of the AP test this year is not about absolute um, convergence or conditional convergence, but I do want to go over this because we have talked about this. And you'll see it's a relatively simple um, technique. So we want to let x equal 1. So what kind of series will we get for that x equals 1? Again, 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 four. Da, da, da. Okay, so that is our infinite series. So if you notice, that's a harmonic series. It's a p series with p equals 1. So in general, forgetting the fact that it's alternating right now, they're harmonic series. this harmonic series diverges. If you remember, a p-series where p equals 1 diverges. Okay. However, this is the alternating series. So the alternating series converges. So in this case, we say that this converges conditionally. Don't believe they'll be asked on this year's test, but there you go. Oh, now I'm going to use this fact again. So let me pull this back up. Okay, there we go. I am looking for the first four non zero terms of g of x, which is the integral of this. So all we're doing, we're just taking the integral of all of it. Okay, integral of the whole darn thing. The integral is g of x. The integral of x, x squared over 2, minus, whoa, where did that come from? x cubed over 3, x cubed over 4. And the reason I'm not um, multiplying these out yet is I am looking for a pattern so I can write the general term. So if I raise, oh, what did I do there? That's x to the fourth. Raise this one, it's x to the fifth over five. We already had a four there. All right, so what's going on here? Well, I still have the alternating series. So negative one to the n plus one. But how do you take an antiderivative? Well, it's just the power rule. So the same pattern would follow. We raise this by 1, and we divide by it. And that is your 
Clorin series for g of x, which is defined as the antiderivative of f. And if you want to, I know that the scoring rubric, I don't know if it's really necessary, cleans it up a bit. They make it x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 6 plus x to the 4th over 12 minus x to the 5th over 20. And then they write out the general term. All right, there you go. As long as you had um, F correct, you got G correct. But again, like I said, all AP tests, let's say you got F incorrect, but you used it correctly for G, you get those points for that. All right, I believe for the next question, we're going to need this. So we're going to take this with us. All right, so we're using G. So this is an um, alternating series error bound again. And what it means that if we take, if we want to find the error, or what, what our answer is within the range of, we look at the next term. So if you notice here, this says P of 4. P of 4 means the fourth degree equation, which is right here. So we're looking at this term for our error, because it's the next term after the fourth degree. So what it says, if I take the fourth degree and I'm letting x equal one half, it should be less than this fifth term evaluated at one half. So it's one half to the fifth power over 20. Technically, it's a negative, but the absolute value is going to kick the negative right out of there. So I know that this equals 1 over 32 over 20, which a little multiplication will tell you that it's 640. Well, guess what? 1 over 640 is less than 1 over 500, which means that this answer is definitely within 1 over 500. All right? Well, that is your 2017 question number six. So hopefully these are getting a little bit uh, easier, a little bit f more flowing, shall we say, as you work through these problems. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.